on a court side, you know what time it is. It's sports plus life. Sports plus life. Huh? Ringside or front court or field pass, we ballin' no. Knuckle up or buckle up, I tell it like it is when I on my show. Home run, slam dunk, knockout, or gossip dough. Sports plus life. Yeah, sports plus life. Huh? Ah. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? What's really good? It's your boy, Brandon Brayvon Towns. This here's another episode of Sports Plus Life, that there sports talk show, where we give you the good stuff. You know what's going down today, so guess what? Turn it off, turn it off, turn it all the way off, boy. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, 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 I I could cut all of the BS because it's a lot to talk about. This may be a two-hour show, but as always, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Brandon Bravon Towns, host of that show called Sports Plus Life. Again, this is that there sports podcast that gives you all of the hot topics in sports and life as well, if necessary. I hope everybody's doing good, doing great, and um, I'm telling you, Bruh, it is, it is a lot to talk about, okay? It is Wednesday, January the 13th, 2000 of the 2 1. And um, I hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I had DOT training today, you know, because I'm about to drive a bigger truck, you know, for Amazon and whatnot. But again, hey, hey, later lay on with that. Later on with that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not going into my personal life for so much today. Um, So, yo, without further ado, my people, yo, let's get to it. My nigga, my nigga, my nigga, my nigga, my nigga, let me tell you, um, we just had a blockbuster land-shaking deal in the NBA today, so much so that I can't even start off the show by talking about what happened in the wildcard playoffs in football this past weekend. This was just announced, I would say, maybe about two hours ago before I went to go pick my kids up. So I said, okay, I'm going to have to wait to get back. But I did post it on Facebook. The uh, Houston Rockets have traded star guard James Harden to the Brooklyn Nets. Now, before I go into detail in regards to the basis of that trade, James Harden had been acting like an unprofessional dickhead uh, since before the season started for the Houston Rockets. Demanding a trade, he demanded a trade to Brooklyn um, at first, but then uh, more teams became an option to him, particularly the Philadelphia 76ers, where his former GM, Daryl Morey, is now the GM of Philadelphia. So he just was pouting, and he came into camp, he came into the season fat. Clearly out of shape. Now, James Harden is a hooper. Okay, he's a very, he's a crafty veteran. He's put up over 40 points already this season in just nine games. He's put up over 30 points this season already. But that doesn't change the fact that he'd been unprofessional. He obviously had been undisciplined when it came to conditioning. And so me, I was always of the point is, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to make his ass suffer. Because if you're the Houston Rockets organization, particularly their owner, Tillman Fertitta, you had given James Harden everything that he could have wanted in life. You surrounded your team with everything and consulted James Harden about every move that was made, whether it was player personnel or whether it was coaching staff. You owe James Harden absolutely nothing. And sometimes when you look at somebody and you bring in player after player and it doesn't work out, Maybe it's not the person that you are catering to. Maybe that person is actually the problem. Dwight Howard. Oh, Dwight Howard. Can't play with him. Couldn't play for Kevin McHale. You fire Kevin McHale. You bring in uh, Mike D'Antoni, who he's reuniting with in Brooklyn. He's the assistant coach under Steve Nash. But then you bring in Chris Paul. Oh, it doesn't work with Chris Paul. Then you bring in his best friend, Russell Westbrook. And then that doesn't work because now what comes out is you're finding out how unprofessional James Harden had actually been during his time with the Houston Rockets, and Houston just gave in. He was the most catered to superstar in the Houston Rockets franchise since Akeem Olajuwon, but the dream brought them two championships, okay? So he earned it. I said this before. It's been on my promo. I've said it since this podcast started. As long as James Harden is your number one option, you will not win a championship. He is not that guy he will stuff the stats he will get you points maybe we even win an mvp or two he will not bring you home the jewelry but now james harden has put himself in a very good position 
by being a dickhead of winning a championship because he's going to a team where he will not be the first option. So you know what? Now James Harden might get that elusive ring, but there's been somebody else who's been acting even more even more unprofessional than him, and that would be Kyrie Irving of the Brooklyn Nets. Kyrie Irving has just, he, he just said to hell with it. I'm just not going to show up and play. Oh, I'm not even going to tell my coaching staff. I'm going to text my teammates and say I'm not coming in to play. For personal reasons. For personal reasons. What's wrong with you? My nigga, my nigga, my nigga, my nigga, my nigga. You didn't play. You hadn't played before the uh, before the shutdown of the season. You hadn't played since February. You niggas are crazy. So when the season started, this was your first action in 10 months. Now you're not going to play for personal reasons and you're making over $33 million? God damn. Dog. <laughs> Dog. Hey, look, man, I don't want to come across as being too old school, but look, man, like I said, I'm all for player empowerment, but you still have a job to do. Personal reasons, and now videos has come out that you were out partying, you know, that you were out partying like a rock stick it da you know, but your personal reasons, you haven't played the last four games for personal reasons. Meanwhile, Kevin Durant, who missed the last 18 months because of a torn ACL, a ruptured ACL, is balling his ass off and he expects to be with his running mate. Now, here's the crazy part about it. When I heard about Kyrie, the Kyrie information today, I said, yo, you know what? Kyrie, it, it, Kyrie is ending up being more trouble than he's worth. He is ending up being more trouble than he is worth. So if I was the Nets at first, I wouldn't have reached out to James Harden. Because if you saw the team at the beginning of the season before the Spencer Dinwiddie injury, I was like, yo, who is messing with the Nets? The Nets are going to sit here and they fitting to whoop everybody ass, Lakers included. But then Spencer Dinwiddie got hurt. Okay, he got hurt. You know, it is what it is if you want to take a deal. And um, it's like, bruh. You really did. You still didn't need. <laughs> you still didn't need um, James Harden on your team because you were that deep. So I was like, okay, since Kyrie Irving is being such uh, unprofessional jackass, Biatch. maybe you should just go ahead and trade Kyrie to Houston for Harden. Because one thing, Harden, even if he's fat and he is, he he looks like a little, he looks like a little uh, uh, chubby ass Teletubby, fluffy face ass, fl fluffy face ass nigga. Um, you would at least know that he is going to play. He is going to come on the floor. But see, ooh, I'm about to get into this in a second. Let me give you the basis of the trade. Okay, Houston sends James Harden to Brooklyn. But not for Kyrie Irving. Not for Kyrie Irving. What the Rockets got back was pretty much a king's ransom of picks. Four first round draft picks, four of the Nets pick swaps, and a second round draft pick. Meanwhile, the Nets ship out Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, and Torian Prince. This was a four-team deal. Um, originally, Karis LeVert was sent to Houston. Houston then trades Karis LeVert to Indiana for Victor Oladipo. Ah! Okay. Um, and then Jared Allen and Torian Pr Prince get sent to basketball hell that is known as the Cleveland Cavaliers. Ah! So you probably won't hear from them until they're about 30 and they're in their pretty early 20s. But so now you're looking at Houston. You get rid of Harden, and believe me, Harden had burned all of his bridges after last night's half-game putrid fat boy effort against the uh, Lakers and then going to come in the press conference and throw all of his teammates under the bus, tell them we're not good enough, this is something that can't be fixed. Who the hell are you? Your conditioning was not good enough. I'm sorry, I am not a James Harden fan at all. Um, but your conditioning was not good enough, fat boy, okay? You're going to sit there and throw... You're going to sit there and insult John Wall, Boogie Cousins. That's an insult to players like Eric Gordon and P.J. Tucker who had been with you for years just because you want to throw a bitch fit because you don't want to be in Houston anymore. Okay, fine. You shipped his ass out of there. But you didn't get back Kyrie, and I can understand that. Why? Because Kyrie has now become a head case. I'm going to get in that in a minute. I'm going to go on Facebook Live, and I'm going to get in that in a minute. But, okay, so... You now, if you're Houston, you shipped Karis LeVert off for a all-star. Victor Oladipo has been an all-star. Okay, and Karis LeVert to Indiana, kind of like that. Malcolm Brogdon, Sabonis, Miles Turner, K 
okay, kind of like that. You know, Indiana is always, no matter what generation you're in, Indiana is always going to be right in the middle of the Eastern Conference when it comes to playoffs. Maybe not necessarily Eastern Conference championships, but, you know, pretty damn close. You know, pretty damn close. Um, they all, they always put together a group of solid players. They just can't put together that team that can get over the hump. Their closest was their um, – was their 2000 team that went to the finals and lost to Shaq and Kobe. That's a, another subject for another day. So um, this is what it is. James Harden is a net. Olin Depot ends up being a rocket. The Rockets get a slew of draft picks. Um, they trade Karis LeVert for uh, Olin Depot. And like I said, Jared Allen and Torian Prince get sent to basketball hell, which is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Okay. Excellent. And now I'm going to get into the basis of this uh, James Harden trade because I'm like, yo, when I first thought about it, I was like, at first, initially, I thought, I said, okay, so the Nets done, done shipped Kyrie out. They, they done traded Harden for Kyrie. And then when I looked at the deal and I saw no Kyrie, I was like, yo, what? Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. How the hell did they pull that one off? You know, and... Then it, I, I started thinking about it. I was like, yo, was this a setup? Like, I'm not even trying to be funny. The conspiracy theorist in me thought that this ended up being a setup. Because I'm like, yo, wait a minute. How ironic is it that Harden and Kyrie become nutcases at the same damn time? And when I say that, I mean... Harden makes it so, he makes it so bad, he makes it so uncomfortable, he becomes such an unprofessional, fluffy-faced jackass that his trade value goes down when it comes to at least trading him for another superstar player. But then on the other hand, you have Kyrie Irving, who just stops showing up the games for quote-unquote personal reasons, to the point where if you think about trading for him, Nobody is going to want to take him because you could be dealing with a potential head case. How is that possible? How does this happen all at the same damn time? To make the stars align to where the Brooklyn Nets can get James Harden and not have to give up Kyrie Irving to pair him with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. And all you give up is Karis LeVert as far as, well, okay, you gave up uh, Jared Allen, you gave up Torian Prince, but I'm talking about as far as a player who could get you 20 a night. I mean, Karis LeVert was averaging 18. He just dropped 20 last night in Brooklyn's game against the Nuggets. So I'm like, yo, did they plot and plan this shit out? And were the Nets in on this? Because I'm pretty sure the Houston Rockets didn't know a damn thing. But it's just crazy because I'm like, yo, this seems really, really fishy to me. I mean, like I said, think about it. Think about it. The only one who's quiet and just doing their job is the best hooper out of the three and that's Kevin Durant right so then you have James Harden who's been a malcontent a pain in the ass unprofessional fat boy out of shape fluffy face fucker since he came in the, into um training camp excuse my language but you know he's playing yeah okay he throw up he throw up 44 and then 38 say yeah you know I can do this anytime I won't it's whether I'm in shape or whether I'm a circle Okay, fine, cool. But then it gets so bad to where he's like, he's throwing his teammates under the bus to the point where if he show up in that locker room, Boogie Cousins probably going to whoop his ass. And then you have Kyrie Irving just all of a sudden out the blue saying, yo, I'm not playing. I've got personal reasons going on. And then you find him on a video and you're like, yo, wait a minute, to the point where now, okay, James Harden's trade value has now gone down because of the way he's acting. Nobody wants to deal with Kyrie. Because Kyrie is, is trying to be smarter than everybody, but Kyrie is coming across as, yeah, he is a he is a hell of a player, but I don't feel like dealing with him. How does that happen to where, hey, people say, hey, you want to trade for Kyrie? Teams are like, hell no. And teams are like, well, and Houston is like, well, would you give me your best player or your second best player for James Hart? Hell no. And the stars are lined like that for the Brooklyn Nets. That is insane. That's crazy. So now the question beg the question begs to ask itself: Are the Nets going to win the title this year? My answer to that question is: They had damn well better. They had damn well better win the title this year because one, 
you ain't got no draft picks now. You know, they the the um the Rockets might not have fleeced you of active players, but they fleeced you of draft capital. And then on top of that, you really don't have no depth like that. Your project your projected starting lineup is Kyrie Irving when he decides he wants to come back and play when Kyrie decides to grace an NBA court with his presence I mean Kyrie needs to start loving basketball like Uncle Drew loved basketball real talk so your projected starting lineup is Kyrie Irving, James Harden Joe Harris who was a holdover, Virginia in the house, Kevin Durant and DeAndre Jordan, remember you had to give up Jared Allen you know so and um, your depth remember Spencer Dinwiddie got a torn ACL, he done you just traded Karis LeVert. So what are you depending on now, Jeff Green? Now, because the star power is so heavy right now in Brooklyn, you'll find your your your, your freelancing used to be all-star level, old, old, long in the tooth free agent who will want to come to Brooklyn because they think they can ride that wave. Somebody who doesn't want to play with LeBron or doesn't want to play with Kawhi and realizes that Golden State still needs Klay Thompson to have a chance to be back on that level, you might say, okay, hey, I'm going to Brooklyn. But if I'm Steve Nash, if I'm head coach Steve Nash, first year as a head coach with no head coaching experience, am I happy or I, or am I shaking in my boots? Because Kyrie Irving has already blatantly disrespected you. They, he has already blatantly disrespected you by saying first before the season started hey, you know this team we really don't need no coach really so if i'm if i am steve nash am i happy or am i shaking in my boots because mind you you know kevin durant he's he's like i said he's a hooper that's what he does and he is back to being kevin durant i'm sorry i don't give a damn what nobody says to me and this is just my opinion Kevin Durant is the best player on in basketball. I mean, I know people say LeBron, you crazy LeBron. Look, if you if I had a choice and this is me talking, I'm only speaking for me. If I had a choice to start a team, would I start Kevin Durant or would I um pick Kevin Durant or LeBron James? I'm picking Kevin Durant, bro. I'm picking Kevin Durant 10 times out of 10. But now you have Kyrie who is very moody. I think he bipolar personally. And then you have James Harden. Like I said, this honestly might be the best thing that happened to James Harden because now we know there's no question about whose team it is. There's no question about who the best player on the team is. That is Kevin Durant check, Kevin Durant check, Kevin Durant check. So, I mean, like I said, is Brooklyn going to win the championship? My answer is they had damn well better. Now, here's me on the personal tip. As a Lakers fan, me seeing this trade, I'm like, damn. But as a person who is not a fan of LeBron's, at least on the basketball court, not saying that he's not top five all time, but as far as me being kind of the LeBron hater, I'm kind of like, <laughs> But yes, but like I said, Brooklyn is now, they're lacking depth. They're definitely lacking draft picks. So Brooklyn's window to win a title, because think about it, Kevin Durant, after this season, two more years on his contract. Kyrie Irving, after this year, two more years. Matter of fact, if, if Brooklyn won the title this year, I believe they would trade Kyrie Irving. I really do. I, I do. James Harden's contract still runs for, for to next year. So this is your window. This is your window. Um, and it's like, this is just so crazy because, you know, like I said, if it was me, I would have made James Harden sit his ass right in Houston because Houston, the Houston organization did everything for him. And not to mention, okay, you want to be traded. There's certain ways that you go about it. And he went about it all wrong. But in the end, he still ended up getting what he wanted. And like I said, the fact that you didn't have, I'm, I'm glad he wasn't traded to Philly because if I'm Philadelphia, there's no way in hell I'm trading Ben Simmons for James Harden. I don't care if Ben Simmons can shoot or not. I'm not trading Ben Simmons for James Harden. No way. Hell no. I don't think so. So, I mean, like I said, this James Harden to Brooklyn for 
the draft picks, and then Karis LeVert, who gets traded to Indiana for Victor Oladipo. You know, it was just so much that I couldn't even start off my podcast with a football playoff action. I had to wait. I did. I had to wait. But um, I'm about to get started on that right now. Okay, right now. <laughs> So what I will do is first just go over what happened on Wild Card Weekend and then go from there. I'll start with the with the first game, the Saturday games. Buffalo beat the Colts 27 to 24 and it's quite simple. This is the reason why Buffalo won the game. Josh Allen. That's it. Because actually the way I looked at it, the way I saw it in the uh, Indianapolis had a better roster. They did they had better defense, they had better O-line. Um, they didn't have a receiver as good as Stefan Diggs, don't get me wrong, but their running game was definitely better. The Colts, let's put it this way, if that game had been played in Indianapolis, the Colts would have won. I mean, simple. I believe that. Josh Allen made the difference in that game, and Buffalo has their first playoff win since 1995. So kudos to them. The second game on Saturday was a divisional uh, matchup, uh, which I picked wrong it was the rams versus the seahawks i called seattle to win seattle lost and by the way i did call buffalo to beat the colts let me get that out there um i called seattle to win they lost the rams defense is so real it is very 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 real jared golf didn't even start of course you know he had the thumb surgery they started a guy john wolford jamal adams knocked him out in the first quarter jared allen came jared allen jared golf came in there anyway and um i don't want to say spot duty because he came in there in the first quarter but of course he led them to a victory well that defense led him to a victory they beat seattle 30 to 20 and i mean good god i mean i at the beginning of the season i had seattle going to the super bowl you know the let russ cook and all of this stuff their offense completely fell apart the last part the last quarter of the season i mean it just it their defense rose up and their offense fell apart and you got with so much so to where the offensive coordinator Brian Schottenheimer just got fired today from Seattle now third game of the uh Saturday night games the nightcap was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Washington football team remember I said since they won the division I wasn't going to call them the DC Dickich anymore so it is what it is now initially I was under the impression that Alex Smith would be starting um when that game started we knew he had the calf issues and looked immobile against the Philadelphia Eagles the final Sunday night game of the season well the last minute at the midnight hour Ron Rivera started Taylor Heineke from Old Dominion a novice you know he was a practice squad player who had just elevated up and Taylor Heineke balled out balled out the uh, uh, Washington may have found their quarterback for the future but unfortunately, the defense, which was Washington's strength, did not come to play the way they should have come to play as Tom Brady did his did his thug thizzle. I can't get mad at him. They beat Washington 31-23 in a game that was honestly too close, more closer than anybody thought it would be. But Tampa has been clicking on all cylinders. But again, I don't know what to make of Tampa's offense because their last five wins have come against sub-500 football teams. Even Washington, who made the playoffs in, in the worst division in football. So what do you make of that? But to me, Tampa Bay did what they were supposed to do. On to Sunday's games. The Baltimore Ravens defeated the Tennessee Titans. Lamar Jackson got that first playoff game uh, first playoff win that everybody was riding his ass about and I just never understood why people were putting that much pressure on him when you think about all of the great quarterbacks in history that took a while for them to win their first playoff game he's in his third season Peyton Manning didn't win his first playoff game until his sixth season okay Aaron Rodgers didn't win his first playoff game until his third season and incidentally when Aaron Rodgers won his first playoff game he ended up taking it all the way to a Super Bowl championship in year three as a star 
starter. Will Lamar Jackson do the same thing? Only time will tell. But they got the win. Lamar Jackson was spectacular. 179 passing yards, pedestrian. 136 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. Sensational. The Ravens' defense was sensational. And when Marcus Peters got the interception with un with um under two minutes left to go in the game and then the team came out and stomped on the titans logo the disrespect was so real and i loved it because mind you the titans did the same thing in their week 11 matchup i didn't think it was necessarily smart at the time because tennessee had three timeouts left and they could have potentially got the ball back but action jackson made sure that that did not happen as he scampered down the field for about a 40 yard gain and planted his behind inbounds to let the clock continue to run out the maturation process is real the Ravens defense is real the Ravens winning streak is real their chance to go to the Super Bowl is real okay don't think it's not for one second now the next game um, let's see the next game that happened on Sunday was the New Orleans Saints against the Chicago Bears now somehow the Chicago Bears tripped over a trunk and landed into the playoffs with Mitch Trubisky as their quarterback. 21-9, it really wasn't even that close. The Bears put together a 99-yard drive when the Bear, when the Saints had completely took it, took the feet off, took their feet off the gas. It was two minutes left in the game. That made it 21-9. I mean, the only reason why it wasn't 28-3 was because on a fourth and goal from the one, Drew Brees didn't stick the ball out quite far enough. Um to try to get a touchdown so it is what it is the saints looked impressive their defense looked impressive they had all their weapons back michael thomas camara emmanuel sanders jared cook this kid deontay harris is no joke they played to me the saints are the most complete team left in the playoffs from top to bottom because one thing that people are not looking at is the fact that drew Brees, even though he had the um multiple broken ribs even though he had the collapsed lung he got a month off, a little over a month off, and he looked fresh. He looked fresh. You know, Drew Brees has never had an howitzer for an arm. He's been uh, more known for accuracy, but he looked fresh in the past, where even last year when he missed the five games, that was all early in the season due to a broken finger. But by the time he got back, he was able to play another seven, eight games, and, and, and the fact that, hey, you're 40 years old. The uh, the bumps and the bruises, the hits, the slams, even if it's not even, you know, if it's not as many as it was when you first came in the league, that would catch up to him. And when it came time for the playoffs, he looked worn down. That's not the case this year. People really need to take that into consideration that everything is right now in reverse for the New Orleans Saints. They are in prime position right now. So they took care of the Chicago Bears. It looks like, you know, Trubisky, they say that that it's up in the air as far as um, quarterback competition goes. Matt Nagy appears to have saved this job by making the playoffs. But, you know, yeah, it's still too many uncertainties in Chicago. And as for the night game, the final game of Wild Card Weekend, the Cleveland Browns whooped, and I mean absolutely whipped, the Pittsburgh Steelers. You talk about a fall from grace. The Cleveland Browns went to Pittsburgh and put up 48 points on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, the final score was 48-37. Don't let that score fool you. Cleveland beat the shit out of Pittsburgh. It was 28 to nothing after the first quarter. Okay, Ben Roethlisberger, who a lot of people are saying they need to move on from. We'll see. Ben Roethlisberger threw for over 500 yards, but I'm gonna tell you, 400. I'm gonna tell you, 400 of those yards didn't mean a damn thing. 400 of those yards meant nothing because after the first quarter, you can make a case that the game was over. Now Pittsburgh had cut it to 35 to 23 before uh, Baker Mayfield threw a, um, a screen pass to Nick Chubb for a 40-yard touchdown, which really, in effect, ended the game. But like I said, uh, four interceptions from Ben five turnovers i mean problem number one for pittsburgh is they can't they, they can't run the ball you know people started noticing that as you know right around the time they were 11 and 0 they can't run the ball they were dependent on a dink and dunk passing game 
And so when Cleveland gets up 28 to nothing, what are you going to do? You're going to go into a prevent defense and allow Ben to dink and dunk. That was his game plan anyway. The Steelers just got beat. They got whipped. They did. Now the defensive injuries, we know that. But you still were 12 and 4. You still had the game in your house, fan, limited fans or not. You got beat by an upstart Cleveland Brown team. The Cleveland Brown. This is what we thought the Browns would do last year. The Cleveland Browns are here. They are here. They're going to let you know they're here. And check that they didn't even have a coach. Their head coach because of the COVID protocols. They didn't have their top two cornerbacks, Denzel Ward and Kevin Johnson, for COVID reasons. They didn't have their top offensive linemen for COVID reasons. And you still went into Pittsburgh and threw up 48 motherfucking points on the Pittsburgh Steelers. What? So, <laughs> it's a new day in Cleveland, at least for football, maybe not in basketball. I'm sorry, Jared Allen. I'm sorry, Torian Prince. But as far as football goes, Baker Mayfield got them boys rolling. Nick Chubb and, and, and Kareem Hunt. And to me, Kareem Hunt put the statement on the game when it was 14-0 and he took a run and he literally drove it up the chest of a Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker and carried three of them into the end zone for a touchdown to make it 21-0. When I saw that, I said, oh, it's over. I said, Cleveland ain't playing no game. I said, they're not going to take the foot off the gas. I said, they could get up 49 to zip. They're not going to take their foot off the gas, not offensively. Now, defensively, they went into that prevent that I, that I truly hate when you get a big lead, but offensively, no, no, no. They played to win. They definitely played to win. They played to win and they were dominant. They were dominant. I, w I was telling my my Uncle T, cause he's a diehard Steelers fan. He said, man, if we had made this stop or that stop, we might've won that game. I said, man, look, they crushed y'all. I said, don't let that score fool you. They crushed you. They did, they came in there with the intent to beat, to convincingly, and it all started with the long snap, with the snap from the first snap of the game. Cleveland kicked the shit out of Pittsburgh. It just is what it is. And now the Steelers have decisions to make. Ben Roethlisberger is going to be 41 mil over the cap. You need to find a running game. You haven't had a true running game since Le'Veon Bell. You have a bunch of... B plus wide, B plus and B minus wide receivers. Juju Smith-Schuster is not a number one receiver. Claypool maybe can develop into one. Deontay Johnson needs to stop uh, dropping the damn football. And, but he's he's a very talented slot receiver. He needs to stop dropping the ball. And who knows what they're going to do with James Washington. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of questions in Pittsburgh. Now, I do believe, I do believe... Um, Speaking of my Uncle T, he just texted me and said, um, he's talking about the James Harden Harden uh, trade. He said, who's going to play defense and rebound? It's a good question. Very good question. I mean, other than who you got other than Kevin Durant and uh, uh, DeAndre Jordan. But um, anyway, yeah, a lot of questions in Pittsburgh. Now, what I'm going to do now is go to the divisional round and let's 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 go ahead and make predictions i've been waffling back and forth on a couple of picks today i'm going to definitively make my picks first game on saturday the rams at packers every game mind you all four games are so interesting it's so hard to pick where to go it really is because games that you think could be a slam dunk I could see as being upsets the only game that I picked wrong last week was picking Seattle to beat the Rams so should I pick Green Bay to beat the Rams I mean their defense is real Aaron Donald got a little banged up he'll be fine he's playing Green Bay at home against the Rams Aaron Rodgers is going to win another MVP he has he is in step he's in the final step of the I'll show you tour Okay, he had a great regular season, step one. He won MVP, step two. Well, he hasn't officially won it, but he won it. He even got home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Step M F N three. Now the final step to the I'll show you tour is simple. Get to the Super Bowl and win. And I think in a hard fought game, they're gonna win. I think Green Bay is gonna win. I do. Hard fought, hard fought game. 
turnover-ridden game. Because I don't know if the Rams are going to start Goff or Wolford. I don't know. But I'm going with the Packers. Second game, Baltimore at Buffalo. I'm rolling with the Ravens. I don't trust the Buffalo's run game or, quite frankly, their run defense. Um, now, I know they were saying that it could be snow, this, that, and the third. This is going to be a head knocker regardless. But I trust the Ravens' defense more than Buffalo's defense. Not to say anything about Josh Allen. He's had a hell of a year. Deserves to be in the MVP uh, conversation. But again, I trust the Ravens' defense more than Buffalo. So I'm going with Baltimore. Sunday's game, Cleveland at Kansas City. Now, I have said this. I have said this. I said it. You even heard it on, 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 on a couple of past promos. I said, who is the best team that is best equipped to beat the Kansas City Chiefs in a playoff game? In a playoff game, I said the Cleveland Browns. And now we will see. Based on me sticking my chest out saying that that could happen, I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to go with Cleveland. I may sound, people may think I sound stupid, crazy, whatever. I think that Cleveland's run game can control time of possession with Chubb and Hunt, Baker doing play action. Kansas City's defense is no stalwart. They're not bad, but, you know, they're not the Ravens' defense or the Rams' defense or the Saints' defense. I believe that they can uh, take time off. That they can take time off the clock, control time possession. Kansas City has been playing with fire all year with all these close games. I think Patrick Mahomes, you know, he'll be limited on opportunities, but he may make one a mistake or two there, where I think it's going to cost him. Going with the Browns, and finally the game that you know. The networks are simply, you know, messing their pants about is you got Brady versus Breeze, the Bucks versus the Saints. I'm going to keep it simple. I hope New Orleans beats the shit out of Tampa. And I'm beyond. Let me let me put it this way. I'm not rooting against the Bucks organization, but I don't want to see Tom Brady win a damn thing. I'm tired of him. I am. I'm tired of him. So I, it's, I, it's not nothing personal against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers organization. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Bruce Arians, you know, the Levante David, you guys on that defense, uh, Carlton Davis, um, Antoine Winfield Jr. It's nothing against them. I'm sick and tired of Tom Brady. It's really, it's, it's that simple. I'm tired of him. And Drew Brees needs this. Drew Brees and Brady have never met in the playoffs before. You know, Drew Brees, we all, you know, look at him as that top-tier quarterback all time. But either Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers, they really need to win another Super Bowl. Because, you know, I believe if Aaron Rodgers wins another Super Bowl, I think he vaults past Peyton Manning. I think he vaults past Peyton Manning when it comes. I, I, not I, me. It wouldn't necessarily. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree because of the gap in between not just Super Bowls but Super Bowl appearances in Aaron Rodgers in his career. But I think a lot of people would put him ahead of Peyton Manning if he won another Super Bowl. Same with Drew Brees. I definitely wouldn't put Drew Brees over Peyton Manning because one, Peyton Manning got the four. Even though Peyton Manning is one two. He got there with four different coaches, two different organizations. Breeze and Sean Payton have been together since 06. One Super Bowl championship, that's what's up. One Super Bowl appearance, that's it. But I really think he needs to beat Tom Brady, you know. And, you know, I guess I'm predicting a, I'm predicting a Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, NFC championship game, you know. Okay, something that both of them, that you know, both of them have been salivating at the chance to get to another Super Bowl. Both of them have been to multiple conference championship games. Don't get me wrong. Well, yeah, they've been to multiple conference championship games. Don't get me wrong. 
But um, I, it would be nice to see them face each other to see who would have the right to go to the Super Bowl. And, I, and in the AFC, I'm predicting a new Browns versus old Browns AFC championship game, a Baltimore Ravens versus Cleveland Browns cha- uh, AFC championship game. That game would be in Baltimore. So let's see what happens. Oh, I am so, I am hype about the upcoming divisional round in the playoffs. Yes, I am. Quick note with college football, because I'm not even going to go into detail. Alabama beat Ohio State. I didn't talk about this last week, how Ohio State dusted Clemson. I was shocked, but it is what it is. But they got to the national championship game and got their ass whipped. They did by Alabama. I'm, you know, you know, it is what it is. Bama wins again. Like the thing that annoys me with college football is that they make sure that their quote unquote blue bloods are always in the uh, are always in the well now college football playoffs. At first it was the BCS stuff. As a way of college basketball, you know, you could actually find yourself with a Final Four that has people, well, schools that are not considered uh, blue bloods, like. In 2006, we loved it when George Mason was in the Final Four. 2011, we loved it when VCU was in the Final Four. 2018, we loved it when the um, uh, team out of Chicago, um, the, the, the mid-major team out of Chicago, with the uh, Saint, like the Mother Teresa, like, you know, it was a Catholic school, but we loved it when they were in the Final Four. We love seeing that stuff. College football does not allow you to see and have those crazy dreams like, hey, what if Boise State actually could go beat everybody, beat, you know, win a national championship? What if UCF could win a championship? College football doesn't allow that to happen, and I personally think that sucks. So I do. I personally think that stinks. I really do. So um, with that being said, where the buzzer, where the buzzer, where the bu- 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 buzzer, I really um, wanted to have some phone interviews today um i just know that given the time that it is right now you know with it being almost 7 30 in the evening and me having to upload this and you know it probably a lot of people probably won't get it to tomorrow maybe maybe i'll come back and do another podcast tomorrow i'll definitely have more time on my hands but before i go today Oh, of course, you know, I'm going to say something about old 45 being impeached the second time. First time in American history, a president gets impeached twice. You know, my thing is, is that they should have removed his ass after the first time. I mean, he's literally out of office in a week, one week. Now, of course, we know a lot can happen in a week. Look what the hell happened last week, you know, with the Capitol, you know, being vandalized pretty much by terrorists i'm not gonna call them trump supporters i'm gonna call them what the hell they are they're terrorists stupid ass terrorists stupid ass spoiled ass brat ass i can't get my way because i think i'm so entitled as terrorist that's who they are that's what they are and that's what old 45 sent them to do and he deserves to get impeached again matter of fact they should grab him by the top of his collar and toss his ass out of the white house uncle phil on jazz fresh prince style Ah! that what they need to do they really do i'm being dead ass serious so anyway um i hope that everybody has a wonderful rest of their day or a wonderful rest of their week. Like I said, I may if I can get a if I can get a few people that wants to kind of chop it up, you know, maybe early in the day because I'll have the time tomorrow. I might do another podcast, but um, I was on Facebook Live earlier. Um, but it's your boy Brandon Bravon Towns. This has been another episode of Sports Plus Life. We will be back soon. A lot of stuff going down. Of course, we know about the blockbuster NBA trade, but again, second round of the playoffs. Let's get it cracking. I'm out this B.I. Peace.